Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Summer Jaguar Festival here in the stunning surroundings of Blenheim Palace here in Oxfordshire. A big welcome to all of the Jaguar Enthusiast Club members who've joined us here. A big welcome, of course, to all of those that have brought these fantastic display cars for us all to enjoy. And, of course, a big welcome to you if you're from the general public enjoying the Blenheim Palace surroundings today with this extra added bonus of some of Britain's best classic cars. We're going to be having a look at some of the vehicles that we've got lined up for you in just a moment. We'll be touring the courtyard area here, showing off some of the themed cars for this year, which of course is film and TV. Lots of Jaguars were very popular in film and TV throughout the decades. We've got some of those superstars here for you as well. Also a very special feature about this weekend is that we have brought together a huge number of representatives of previous team members, drivers and staff from the era of Tom Walkinshaw Racing. We're going to be talking to some of those, including the guys that designed that famous car, uh, the Silk Cut Jaguar XJR9 that won Le Mans in 1988 and 1990. Film and TV is our theme and we've uh, gathered together some of the Jaguar stars of film and TV throughout the years. This one, of course, is the XJ6, the out of minder, of course, that uh, Arthur Daly himself drove. This was the genuine car from filming. Uh, the series ran from 1979 right the way through, shockingly, until 1993 forgotten it went into the 1990s. Um, he later actually had a Jaguar XJ40. Uh, for those of you that know Jaguars, uh, uh, of course, the later XJ6 uh, from the late 1980s, early 1990s. But this was his uh, Series 3 XJ6, uh, 1982 model that Arthur Daly had in that lovely 70s beige which is uh, coming back into fashion, I'm told. This one, a totally different scenario entirely. Uh, this is uh, one of our film cars. This is, of course, a replica of the Austin Powers car from the film Gold Member. Uh, it was originally a Jaguar press car, this XK8, uh, running the four-litre engine. That then takes us on to some of the James Bond cars, and it's another XK8. And this one, if you can come down close with me, has rockets in the front. Now, if you're 12 years old, this is the coolest thing you'll have ever seen. It still retains the original number plate, of course, Bad One, from the film Die Another Day. This was the car that chased Pierce Brosnan across the ice in that famous film. Uh, it has rockets on the front. It's got the genuine machine gun uh, mounted on the back there, which I'm told if I misbehave on camera, they're going to fire up and uh, point at me. And this, again, is a Jaguar Daimler Heritage Trust car. So uh, thanks to those guys for letting us uh, have this on display throughout the weekend. Uh, bad one, the Die Another Day uh, Jaguar XKR. That then takes us to uh, an even more modern Jaguar, actually, from another James Bond film. This one, the CX-75. This was a concept car that Jaguar uh, came up with in the uh, mid-2000s in that lovely bronze-orange. Uh, this is a 2012 CX-75. Of course, uh, this actually was very famous for being one of Jaguar's very first prototype hybrid cars as they were starting to look at new engines and new developments. And it was, of course, uh, used in uh, the Bond film, a car very similar to this used in the Bond film, CX-75. Got to be one of the quickest cars James Bond has ever driven. And we have it here as part of the film and TV lineup at Blenheim Palace for the Summer Jaguar Festival 2019. You can, by the way, get up close to all of these cars. This, then, a totally different era again, 1955, Daimler Regency Sportsman. What can I tell you about this car? Well, it's gorgeous, is what I can tell you in that beautiful two-tone colours. And of course, uh, this was the, one of the most expensive cars you could buy uh, in 1955. And you imagine the sort of other cars that were running day to day on the road in that time. This was just a touch of luxury. This was used extensively in the filming of Miss Marple. This car, I'm told, has done over 600,000 miles since 1955. So again, here in the courtyard for you to come and have a look at as part of our film and TV lineup. This then, the Jaguar XK140, introduced in 1954 as a replacement for the XK120 that had come before. This car has been owned by a very uh, well-known uh, character in the club, a guy called Keith Vincent. He's founder, member and vice president of the Jaguar Enthusiast Club. 
and you can read all of the information, including information about the comedy that it was involved with, uh, the Too Many Crooks comedy of 1958. That car was used in the filming of that. If you ask anyone what they remember of the 1960s, they'll probably say the Beatles, Minis and the Jaguar E-Type. It was an iconic vehicle from the 1960s. And this one was in a Sean Connery film called Woman of Straw. No, I haven't seen it either. But this is the genuine car, 814 ELB. And uh, if you come and have a look at it here in the courtyard, you'll see all of the uh, still photography from that film. A real icon of the 1960s for Jaguar, of course, uh, that Jaguar E-Type. Moving down the line, of course, and another of the icons that we have lined up here. This, of course, is a Jaguar Mark II. Jaguar Mark II is, of course, probably most famous on TV for Inspector Morse, and whilst we're in Oxfordshire, we should really mention that series. They are also celebrating their 60th anniversary this year, launched in 1959. And then it's back to James Bond again. And this is a car that's very, very rarely seen, actually. It's a real privilege to have this car here, and uh, uh, you'll see in the grill there the flashing blue lights, because, of course, any of you that have watched the most recent James Bond films will know that M... Bond's boss, as it were, uh, gets uh, transported around London in this very car. If you do watch the film that this features in, uh, I'm thinking of Skyfall in particular, uh, you'll see in that film as he comes out of the uh, underground uh, station, the, uh, the tube station where it all kicked off and where someone had opened fire in a courtroom, you'll see M get bundled into the back of this car and as they turn right through a very tight street, they just clip the curb on the way through. Brilliant piece of James Bond filming. But this is, of course, M's car from that famous uh, Skyfall James Bond movie. This is from the 1960s, and it might not be the, the most immediate uh, uh, sort of representation of the film, but if you recognise the number plate, 848 Cry, you'll know that this car was in the Italian job. We can't uh, let conversation about the Italian job go by without mentioning the fact that as well as the Jaguar Mark II celebrating its 60th anniversary this year, the Mini is also celebrating its 60th anniversary, another icon of the 1960s, so fantastic to have that uh, Jaguar from the Italian job here as part of the lineup. And then I'll leave this one till last because it is uh, appropriate, I think, because here we are in leafy, sunny Oxfordshire in the uh, uh, grounds of Blenheim Palace and this is probably one of the most uh, iconic cars associated with film and TV in Oxfordshire. Of course, Inspector Morse was the original series that used a Mark II. And of course, the spin-off that's happened since Inspector Morse uh, rose to popularity is the new series Endeavour. This is not a Mark II, this is a Mark I that the Endeavour series used. And this is the genuine car from Series 1 of Endeavour. And Endeavour Morse filmed that very famous sequence where he looks into the mirror, the rearview mirror, when Inspector Thursday is asking him what he'd like to do for his future and he sees John Thor staring back at him. It's a goosebump moment if you're an Inspector Morse fan. How do you get your Mark I onto the TV and how does it pure, become so famous? Pure community. Incidentally, I was buying a coffee and I saw my car and you on the screen saying, <laughs> Jen is normally around here, so I thought, so I Quick ran run. out of breath. <laughs> They wanted a Mark I Jaguar. A friend of mine runs Endeavour Morse, no, he does Morse Wedding Car Hire. So they rang him. He said, have you got a Mark I? He said, no, but I know a man that does. Me. So they rang me, basically. Great. So we did seven days of filming, did all the press launch work up at Morden College in Oxford, and the rest is history, really. And so did they look after the car for you? Well, I was there the whole time Good. with Sean Evans. <laughs> picture on the front screen of Sean and me and uh, he was brilliant he drove it beautifully He's, Sean is a very um, lots of empathy sympathetic sort of guy what is it about the Mark 1 that, that caught your eye? I love the instrument panel but I've had Mark 2's and I went to a garage this was for sale as a bit of a wreck so I took sympathy on it as I do <laughs> so I thought 24 years ago I'll buy that so I bought it and over the years we've rebuilt it with help, but I changed it all last week and I did all the woodwork. And the instruments are quite different to the Mark II. For me, they do it a bit better. I love the Mark II as well, but I've managed to restore this interior so it's sort of sympathetic and, and I just love that. And they're going up in value as well, which is the good news, you know.
And of course, you mentioned uh, Sean Evans, the actor that played yes. uh, Endeavour Morse. That's right. Really enjoying using the car and being a part of filming. It's nice to have cars out in the public eye like this, just to promote them to new audiences, isn't it? Well, I think it is because I'm amazed that when I park the car here, I'll take my hat off. Um, immediately, I have people coming up and saying, "Is this the actual car?" So I have to explain that it was used in all the press launch and that it was in the, what they call the prequel, the first four instalments. And people just love engaging in conversation. The, there's so many fans for the Morse series that, you know, they come up and they chat away and I, have, I meet some lovely people. <laughs>